So this is going to be a scientist critique of Ben Stein's Expelled. Throughout this video I'll be showing clips of the movie so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. The first clip that I'm going to be showing you sets the tone for the entire movie. It's essentially a straw man created by Stein. And rather than regard humankind as carrying the spark of the divine, they believe we're nothing more than mud animated by lightning. Now there are many things fundamentally wrong and misleading about this statement, such as the fact that, oh, they're ignoring several billion years of history in between. No credible scientist actually suggests that mud turned into people. That's not how it worked. Although, wait a minute. Actually, that is what the Bible believes, isn't it? That we came from mud minus the lightning? Well, in any case, it's utterly dishonest because no one is actually arguing that. And it's about as honest as saying that your parents strolled off the ark last Tuesday. Now, a little while later on in the movie, we get to the Sternberg fiasco. Now, this is how Ben Stein presents the issue. This is Dr. Richard von Sternberg, mild-mannered research scientist. Until 2005, he also edited a small scientific journal affiliated with the Smithsonian Institution in Washington until he published an article by this man. As a result, Dr. Sternberg quickly found himself the object of a massive campaign that smeared his reputation and came close to destroying his career. After the publication of the Meyer article, the climate changed. It moved from being chilly to being outright hostile. Shunned, yes, and discredited. What I'm asking for is, is the freedom to follow the evidence wherever it leads. What was so damning about this article? Nothing, as far as I could tell. It now, what really happened? Sternberg cheated and allowed the paper in through the back door. The paper was published without review by any other editor, which is what the journal requires. Sternberg hijacked the entire review process all by himself and snuck the paper in. Now, in cheating, he undermined the integrity of the journal. It had absolutely nothing to do with the topic of intelligent design if he had snuck in a paper on G-protein-coupled receptors by his old professor. The result would have been the exact same. In fact, Sternberg wasn't even the most qualified person to review the paper, period. Three of his colleagues were experts on the Cambrian invertebrates that Meyer had been discussing, but nevertheless, Meyer stole the review process all for himself and cheated to sneak it in the back door. Lastly, Sternberg was never even an employee of the Smithsonian. He was an unpaid research associate who had left his position as editor six months before the Meyer article was even published. But nevertheless, when you cheat, you can get expelled. Now, as someone who is actively involved in both the academic and scientific communities, I can tell you that there absolutely is persecution. But it's not unjust for the following reasons. First of all, what would happen if at those same institutions an employee had stood up at a press conference as a representative of the university and declared that there was no holocaust? Now, of course, they would be shunned. They're representing the university and they're making the university look utterly foolish. Now, you may stop and say that that's an unfair analogy because no historian questions the holocaust, but that's not true. In fact, there are four times more historians rejecting the Holocaust than there are scientists rejecting evolution. And this is by the most conservative estimates. When I, we actually take the numbers given by the um, Institute for Historical Revi Revision, that figure jumps up to 200 times the amount of scientists rejecting the Holocaust, or historians rejecting the ho Holocaust, rather. So it's for those same reasons. It embarrasses the university because it's utterly foregoing the evidence and foregoing thought. When you embarrass your boss, stuff happens. Now, will that person experience persecution? Absolutely. Is it unjust? No. The same thing with evolution. Second of all, in science it's not what you believe, but why you believe it. For example, if I were to believe that the Earth was flat, and I were to actually publish evidence that fully supported it, and I did end up proving indeed that the Earth was flat, I would win a Nobel Prize. I would be the most famous scientist of my time, I'd have no problems getting grants, period. But that simply doesn't happen. In science, it's not what you believe, but why you believe it. Same thing happens, again, like I said about the Earth being flat. If you stand up, if you actually furnish evidence, that's one thing. But when you stand there and say, well, it, it, if it was round, all the people in China would fall off. Like, no, then you get laughed at, and that's exactly what these intelligent design people do. 
they utterly ignore the evidence or they're ignorant on that and they still they still feel qualified to speak out about it and that's exactly where the embarrassment and persecution comes from thirdly is the fact that to be a scientist and a creationist you have to utterly abandon the scientific method and ignore and be ignorant of so much evidence to maintain your position that you're going to be a poor scientist period you're going to be a poor researcher a poor teacher and a poor scientist in general. Now to get an idea as to the type of evidence and predictions that you have to ignore, take a look at the video response that I'm posting to this. So basically, by ignoring the scientific method in one area, you're going to be sloppy in other areas, and you're going to be a poor asset to the university and unable to get published. And this is why many people who are creationists don't make it in the university. Do they not make it because they're a creationist? Or do they not make it because they lack the skills that would prevent them from being a creationist? Lastly, a creation scientist doesn't exist. It's the same thing as an atheist priest. So after a little bit of examination, it becomes fairly apparent that when you remove the context of religion and compare what these men are doing to absolutely any other discipline in science, their treatment isn't unjust, it's expected. Suggesting that Darwinism is not only improbable, it might actually be dangerous. Okay, let's lay this Hitler garbage to rest once and for all. First of all, Hitler undoubtedly believed in gravity. Does that make it false? No. Second of all, I have more ground to argue. Take a look at these images. Hitler clearly had no concept whatsoever of how evolution works, and clearly, if you take a look at his writings, it's very evident. His idea of genealogy is much strongly rooted in the Christian faith and in biblical genealogy than it is actual biological geology. And you know what? These images don't exactly lie either. See this one? God mit uns? It was on all Nazi belt buckles. It means God with us. Sounds very atheist to me. Thirdly, even if Hitler was solely due to evolution and the, and the, and the Holocaust and all that was 100% due to evolution and you saw the little Darwin fish on all the Nazi uniforms instead of the swastika, it would still be nothing compared to the damage that's been caused by religion. From the Crusades, the Inquisition, to even 9-11 and the Holy Wars going on now today. Many, 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 many times the amount of people who have been killed due to religion compared to, to atheism or evolution, period. And this is coming from a Christian. Utterly... It's deplorable that Ben Stein would tug at the heartstrings of his viewers and manipulate their emotions in order to attempt to sneak a point in. But that aside, he's logically bankrupt and wrong. This is exactly why you don't go making a movie about something that you don't know anything about. And in case you didn't hear about the P.Z. Myers fiasco at the screening of Expelled, he, who is thanked in the credits of the movie, was forced to leave from the screening of a movie that he is thanked in the credits. He is being kicked out of a movie. He's being expelled from a movie about expelling people for their beliefs. I mean, it doesn't get much more clear-cut than that, does it? I mean, is the hypocrisy apparent? If it's not, then perhaps we could take a look at the, at the utter plagiarism that the movie employs, too, and the fact that they've stolen images from Harvard University and dubbed over them to add to creationist soundtrack without permission from Harvard, um, or the fact that they've quote-mined several people in the movie and cut Dawkins off, period, um, mid-sentence, in fact, to try and prove a point. Or there's the fact that they stole John Lennon's song Imagine and used it in the movie. Yoko Ono, who has the right to those, never gave him permission. This is evidenced by her filing suit against them. I mean, what does it say that the group claiming the moral high ground and authority is is going through all these dishonest acts to try and produce the movie about about being honest? I mean, it's hypocrisy at its highest. I suppose it also doesn't help very much that the producers themselves are utterly ignorant about science. Mark Mathis um, was actually recently interviewed as well, and this is from pandasum.org I'm reading right now, that the guy doesn't know the first thing about evolutionary biology, yet he produces a film going against it. Um, for example, he says that evolution is untestable, which is obviously untrue, and to give him an example, they pointed out that scientists have witnessed speciation plenty of times. When, when that's pointed out to him, he immediately interrupts like, whoa, wait a minute, are you serious? Please send me whatever information you have. That's amazing. I've never heard anyone say that. Yet he's just produced a film about evolution. Like, I learned that in my undergrad. Nevertheless, he was sent the peer-reviewed paper, and he later responded by saying, this isn't an important argument for me. 
Lastly, I couldn't really agree more with Jeffrey Kluger of Time Magazine when he points out the fact that Stein never really produces any evidence of his own. His entire movie is devoted to artificially creating holes in evolution and saying, aha, evolution can't explain that, therefore it's false. But he says, and I completely agree, that all scientific knowledge is built this way. A fish net is made up of a lot more holes and strings, but you can't therefore argue that the net doesn't exist. Just ask the fish. And that beautifully sums up the position and the truth on the matter. Not only that, but many of the, the holes that Stein points out, evolution explains already. Once again, it's just another example of the producers and his ignorance about the thing that they made a movie about.